All right, welcome back, everyone. Today we're going deep, real deep into CERN sure. and uh, what it might tell us about the universe over, let's say, the next decade. Okay. Now, yeah. you probably already know that CERN is pushing the boundaries of, you know, particle physics. Right. But we're going way past, you know, just the basics. We've yeah. got research papers, mm. internal reports, even some, like, pretty out-there physics blogs. Yeah. And we're going to try to pull out the really fascinating stuff. Oh, it sounds good. For you. Yeah. So what's so captivating about CERN is that it's like a window into like the very first moments of the universe. Well, yeah. I mean, they're recreating conditions that are very similar to those like, you know, microseconds after the Big Bang. Wow. Which could hold the answers to some of the, uh, you know, most fundamental questions in physics, really. OK. So to create these like Big Bang conditions, they use the Large Hadron Collider, right? Right. The LHC. Yeah, the LHC. But it's not just about smashing particles together at, like, insane speeds, right? What, what are they actually trying to find in the, like, the debris of these collisions? Yeah, the LHC is an incredible feat of engineering. Oh, yeah. But it is, it's a tool. Okay. The real treasure lies in what we can learn from the data. Uh, you know, oh, okay. that it generates. Yeah. So one of the key goals is to find evidence for uh, phenomena beyond what we call the standard model of particle physics. Now, I know that the standard model is our current, like, best theory. It's the best we got. Of particle physics. Yeah. But it has some holes in it, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, what are some of the specific mysteries that CERN is hoping to solve? Well, one of the biggest mysteries is its inability to explain what dark matter is. Okay. We know from astronomical observations that dark matter makes up like 85% of the matter in the universe. Wow. And yet we have no idea what it's made of. Right. So yeah. CERN's experiments uh, could potentially produce particles that interact with dark matter. I and see. and that could give us our first glimpse. Into this elusive substance. So they're essentially looking for a particle that's invisible to us. Yeah. But interacts with the universe in a way that we can detect. In a way that we can see its effects. Yeah, that's... That's incredible. Yeah. But the standard model has other problems too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Another big one is something called the hierarchy problem. Okay. The standard model doesn't explain why the Higgs boson, the particle that is responsible for giving mass to all the other particles, right. is so much lighter than uh, what the theory predicts. Mm. So this discrepancy suggests that there might be new particles and forces at play that we haven't discovered yet. Okay, and that's where supersymmetry comes in, right? The idea that every known particle has a uh, heavier superpartner. Exactly. Susi. C, yeah, as it's often called, could solve the hierarchy problem by introducing these superpartners, yeah. which would essentially, you know, cancel out the contributions that make the Higgs boson too heavy. Okay. And if Susi chooses true, some of these superpartners might even be the, uh, you know, what dark matter is made up of. Yeah. Of the constituents of dark matter. So finding evidence for supersymmetry would be like a monumental discovery. It would be huge. Yeah. Not just for, you know, particle physics, but like for our understanding of the universe. For our understanding of, yeah, the universe as a whole. As a whole, right. It'd be revolutionary. It would change our understanding of the fundamental building blocks of nature. And it could open up entirely new avenues of research. Okay. So CSY is one big target, mm -hmm. but they're also looking for something called exotic hadrons. Yeah. Now, these are particles that are made up of more than three quarks. Right. right. So protons and neutrons, the particles that make up atoms, right. are composed of three quarks bound together by something called the strong force. Mm -hmm. But recent discoveries at CERN have revealed particles called tetraquarks and pentaquarks, which have four and five quarks, respectively. Yeah. So these exotic hadrons are kind of like the, uh, I don't know, like... The oddballs. The oddballs of the... Yeah, the oddballs okay. of particle world, yeah. Yeah. And, and studying these unusual configurations is really crucial. Okay. Because it gives us uh, new insights into the nature of the strong force. Right. One of the four fundamental forces of the universe. Like these exotic hadrons are pushing the boundaries of what we thought was even possible totally. in the subatomic world. Absolutely. But even with the LHC, we're limited in the, uh, the energies that we can reach. Right. Right. So what's like next on the horizon for CERN? Well, CERN is already planning for the future okay. with the Future Circular Collider, uh -huh. or FCC. FCC. This behemoth of a machine would be 100 kilometers in circumference. 100 kilometers, that's 
That's mind-boggling. It would dwarf the LHC yeah. and allow us to smash particles together at even higher energies. Wow. Potentially revealing new particles and forces beyond uh, our wildest imaginations. 100 kilometers, that's, that's like, what specific technologies are they even developing? to make this like colossal machine a reality? Well, one of the key challenges is creating magnets. Okay. Powerful enough to steer these high energy particles around the FCC's massive ring. Right. So they're they're pushing the boundaries of what are called superconducting materials. Okay. Trying to develop magnets that well, can hmm. generate magnetic fields far stronger than anything we have today. Wow. And these advancements could have significant implications beyond particle physics. Right. Potentially leading to breakthroughs in areas like, uh, you know, energy storage and medical imaging. It's amazing how, like, the pursuit of, of fundamental knowledge can lead to these, like, unexpected technological spinoffs. It really is. It really is. But I'm curious, like, what are some of the specific discoveries that we might expect from the FCC in the next decade? Could it be the key to finding those SUSY particles we were talking about? I mean, the FCC has the potential to be a total game changer. Okay. Not only could it find evidence for SUSY, but it could also reveal new unexpected phenomena that you know, we haven't even considered yet. That's exciting. It's like it's, we're on the verge of a new... It's like we're on the verge of a whole new era of discovery. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And it's not just about finding new particles. Right. The FCC could also help us, you know, probe the fundamental nature of space and time. Okay. Shed light on the origins of the universe. Mm -hmm. And maybe even give us hints about the existence of other dimensions. Oh, other dimensions. Things are about to get really interesting. They are. Uh, we're just getting started. Yeah. But... You know, before we dive into the realm of those mind-bending possibilities, okay. let's take a step back and explore some of the practical applications of CERN's research. No. Because it's not all about esoteric theories and, you know, far future experiments. Yeah, you're right. I am fascinated to learn how the research at CERN is already, like, impacting our lives today. Yeah. So let's get into it. You know, it's pretty amazing how research into the fundamental building blocks of the universe right. can lead to advancements that actually touch our everyday lives. Yeah. Like, for instance, okay. CERN's work has totally revolutionized medical imaging. Oh, yeah, I've heard about this. Yeah. So tell me more about, like, how particle physics is helping doctors see inside the human body. Well, take PET scans, for example. Her? PET stands for positron emission tomography. Right. And it relies on antimatter, something mm -hmm. that was first observed in cosmic rays. Wow. And later studied in detail at CERN. Okay. The detectors used in PET scans were actually originally developed for particle physics experiments mm -hmm. and then adapted for medical use. So the same technology that's used to track particles in a collider is yeah. now helping doctors diagnose and treat diseases. That's that's a pretty big leap. It is. It is. <laughs> and it's a testament to how fundamental research can have, like, these unexpected but profound benefits right. for humanity. And speaking of leaps, another area where CERN's research is having a major impact is in cancer treatment. That's right. I remember reading about this. They're using particle beams to target tumors, right? Exactly. CERN is at the forefront of developing a technique called hadron therapy. Hadron therapy. Which uses beams of protons or carbon ions to precisely target uh, cancerous tumors. Okay. These particles deposit most of their energy at a specific depth, which minimizes damage to surrounding healthy tissue. So it's like a it's like a super precise scalpel. Yeah. But made of like subatomic particles. That's a great analogy. Okay. Hadron therapy offers a more targeted and less invasive approach to treating certain types of cancers, especially those located deep within the body or near critical organs. Wow. It's incredible how like the quest to understand the universe at its most fundamental level can lead to like these life-saving medical breakthroughs. It really is. And these are just a couple of examples. Right. The technologies that are developed at CERN have applications in fields ranging from, you know, computer to materials science <laughs> to environmental monitoring. So it's a constant reminder that investing in fundamental research pays dividends in ways that we can't always predict. It's like yeah. planting a seed that can grow into a whole forest of innovations. Exactly. But I have to admit, while those like practical applications are really fascinating, right. I'm still drawn to the like the more mind bending side of things. Of course. Yeah. We were talking about other dimensions earlier. Right. Are those really a serious possibility? Like, are we really talking about... You know, the idea of extra dimensions yeah. might sound like something straight out of, you know, science fiction. Right. 
but it's a concept that is taken seriously by many physicists, including those at CERN. Okay, but how can there be dimensions that we can't see or experience? Like, our brains are wired to perceive the world in three dimensions, up, down, left, right, forward, backward. Right. How could there be more? It's a challenge to wrap our minds around, that's for sure. Yeah. One way to try to visualize it is to imagine a tightrope walker. To them, the rope is their entire world, just one dimension. Okay. But a tiny ant crawling on that rope yeah. could also move around its circumference, yeah. experiencing a second dimension. Mm. We might be like that ant, completely unaware of dimensions beyond our everyday perception. Okay, I can kind of picture that. So are these extra dimensions, like, just really, really small? That's one possibility. Some theories suggest that extraspatial dimensions could be curled up at extremely small scales, billions of times smaller than an atom. Wow. So tiny that we haven't been able to detect them directly. Okay. But if they exist, they could influence the behavior of particles in our universe. So they're like hidden from our view, but their effects could be measurable. Exactly. One way CERN is searching for evidence of extra dimensions is by looking for tiny black holes. Wait, black holes at CERN, isn't that, like, dangerous? Not at all. The black holes we're talking about are microscopic, okay. and they would evaporate almost instantly. So they wouldn't pose any threat? They wouldn't pose any threat, no. Uh, the reason why they're interesting is that if extra dimensions exist, it would be easier to create black holes at the LHC right. than in a universe with only three spatial dimensions. So finding even a fleeting tiny black hole hmm. would be like a huge clue that there's more to the universe than meets the eye. Absolutely. It'd be a revolutionary discovery, yeah. shaking the foundations of physics and our understanding of reality. Oh. And speaking of shaking foundations, there is another uh, mind-bending concept that CERN's research touches on, okay. the possibility of parallel universes. Okay, now we're really getting into science fiction territory. I know, right. But are parallel universes even remotely plausible from like a scientific standpoint? While it might sound far-fetched, the idea of a multiverse, cool. where our universe is just one of many, right. has roots in several areas of theoretical physics, Okay. particularly in cosmology and string theory. I'm all ears. How could multiple universes exist? One way to think about it is the concept of cosmic inflation. This theory suggests that in the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, right. the universe expanded exponentially. Yeah. Some versions of this theory propose that inflation could be eternal hmm. with different regions of space inflating and creating like separate universes, hmm. potentially with different physical laws and constants. So our universe is just one bubble yeah. in a vast cosmic foam of universes. That's one way to picture it. It's a captivating idea. It is. And while we don't have direct evidence for the multiverse yet, right. CERN's research is pushing us closer to understanding the conditions that might have led to such a reality. It's like we're like peeking behind the curtain of our own universe yeah. and getting these glimpses of a much grander, more complex reality. I like that, peeking behind the curtain. Yeah. But with all of these like mind-blowing concepts, yeah. it's easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. Like, where does CERN fit into our overall quest to understand the universe? That's a that's an important question. It is. You see, CERN is more than just a like a research facility. It's a symbol of humanity's like relentless pursuit of knowledge. Totally. Our drive to understand the universe and our place within it. It's like a beacon of curiosity shining out into the cosmos. Exactly. And the discoveries that are made at CERN, whether they're about new particles or extra dimensions or even the possibility of, you know, parallel universes, mm. they're not just like scientific breakthroughs. They're like milestones in our collective journey of exploration and discovery. Yeah, well said. It's inspiring to think that we're part of this grand endeavor pushing the boundaries of knowledge and revealing the secrets of the universe. It really is. But I have a feeling we've only scratched the surface of what CERN might uncover oh, yeah. in the like the coming years. Since the beginning. Yeah. The next decade promises to be an era of incredible discoveries at CERN, potentially leading to a paradigm shift in our understanding of the universe and our place within it. I can't wait to see what they uncover. But before we like get too carried away with the future. Yeah. Let's bring things back down to earth for a moment. Okay. We've talked about the like mind-blowing discoveries and yeah. the practical applications. Yeah. But what about the like the human side of CERN? Yeah, good point. Yeah, it's easy to get like caught up in the uh 
the scientific breakthroughs and the mind-boggling concepts. But yeah. at the end of the day, CERN is driven by people. Yeah. Like what kind of minds are drawn to this kind of research? Well, CERN is like a magnet for some of the most brilliant and inquisitive minds on the planet. Mm. You'll find physicists, engineers, computer scientists, technicians, all united by this shared passion for exploring the unknown. Yeah, it must be a really stimulating environment. It is. Like, what's it like to work at CERN? It's truly a unique and inspiring place. Okay. Imagine, like, a global village. Yeah. Where people from over 100 countries wow. collaborate on some of the most challenging and intellectually stimulating projects imaginable. There's this, like, constant buzz of activity, oh, heck yeah. this sense of shared purpose. Right. And uh, and a real camaraderie among the researchers. It sounds like a, like a real melting pot of cultures and ideas. It is. All focused on unlocking the secrets of the universe. Yeah, totally focused on that. Yeah. And it's not just about, like, individual brilliance. Right. CERN thrives on collaboration. Okay. Large-scale experiments like those conducted at the LHC involve hundreds, sometimes thousands wow. of researchers working together, sharing data, and building upon each other's insights. That's, I mean, that's the beauty of science, isn't it? It's this, like, collective endeavor. That for sure. Transcending borders and cultures. It transcends borders, it transcends cultures, mm, yeah. and CERN really embodies that spirit of international cooperation. Totally. It's this reminder that e even in a world that's often divided by differences, mm -hmm we can still come together to pursue this this common goal right. of understanding the universe and our place in it. It's a it's a powerful message. Yeah. And it makes me wonder like what kind of legacy will CERN leave behind? You know, CERN's legacy is uh it's multifaceted. Okay. On one hand, it's a testament to human ingenuity. Right. Pushing the boundaries of engineering and technology to build these machines that were once thought to be impossible. Like the LHC. Yeah, like the LHC. Just a, a real testament to like human ambition and our desire to explore the unknown. Exactly. But CERN's legacy goes beyond just the machines themselves. Okay. It's about the knowledge that we gain, the discoveries that we make. Right. And the way those discoveries shape our understanding of the universe and ourselves. And those discoveries, they, they have the potential to impact generations to come. Absolutely. Right. CERN's research is laying the foundation for a future where we may understand the fundamental nature of dark matter. Wow. Unlock the secrets of extra dimensions. Right. And maybe even un unravel the mystery of the Big Bang itself. It's it's almost overwhelming to think about the possibilities. I know. Yeah. But it's it's also incredibly exciting. Yeah, for sure. CERN is this like beacon of hope, a symbol of human potential. Yeah. And a reminder that even in the face of these like immense challenges, right. we're capable of achieving extraordinary things. It's been it's been an incredible journey exploring the world of CERN with you. Yeah. We've uh, we've delved into the science, the technology, uh, yeah. the human stories and like the the mind-boggling possibilities. And as we wrap up our deep dive here. Okay. I want to leave you with a thought, uh, right? CERN's research shows us that the universe is a vast and mysterious place. Right. Full of wonder and possibilities that are, you know, beyond our current comprehension. It's, yeah, it's this humbling reminder that there's still so much we just don't know. Yeah. So much left to discover. Absolutely. Yeah. So as you go about your day today, okay. just take a moment to appreciate the vastness of the universe, mm -hmm. the complexity of nature, yeah. and the incredible power of, of human curiosity mm -hmm. that drives us to explore the unknown. Who knows what wonders await us just beyond the horizon? Yeah. Keep asking those questions. Keep asking them. Stay curious and never stop exploring. And who knows? Maybe one day you'll find yourself walking the halls of CERN. You might. Contributing to this grand endeavor of uh, unraveling the mysteries of the universe. Maybe. Until next time. Until next time.